I hope and pray for all of you to see what you must truly thirst for in your life journey. You will find your final ending in the fulfillment of your eternal meaning and value. Amen? Amen, amen. You know what? Every person's life is determined by what person thirsts for, what one wishes to achieve and fulfill. The same applies to us, you and me, who believes in Jesus Christ as our Savior and the Lord King, the Son of God, which means God. Even as the people of Jesus who gather around the cross to receive God's grace, our journey of life and faith will determine its direction and destination depending on what we thirst for. Think about Abraham. He is the father of faith, and he has received the words of promise from God himself. God told him like that, depart from your current livelihood, lifestyle, and go to the land where I have prepared. It's God's command. And, and then God gave him a vision, the word of a vision, the word of the promise like this. Through you, I will bring forth great people and make your name great. You will be a blessing. And then God gives him the word of guarantee like this. Whoever blesses you, I will bless. And whoever curses you, I will curse. All lands and all people, all nations will be blessed through you, Abraham. Amazing. It is the word of vision, or the promise. So that with this promise, Abraham left his home and headed to the promised land. It was good. But you know what? His thirst, Abraham's thirst, still craved for the success of his business. Later, you know, the land of promise, there was uh, drought. There was drought. The land faced the drought, which was very fatal for Abraham's agriculture, the, 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 the cattle breeding. So for the sake of his business, he went south, and south, and south, and finally he ended up in Egypt. There, he was scared. He was scared. So he called his wife, his what? Sister. And actually, he was robbed of his wife. Okay, make a long story short. It was totally shameful and dishonorable, right? It's very shameful and dishonorable to Abraham. But God restored his wife back to Abraham. His next challenge was the absence of a son. Even though God told his promise, okay, I'm going to make I'm going to make the great people through you. He had still no children, no child. But still, Abraham was thinking in the ways of the world. He considered children simply as his strength, his power, as did the culture around him. So he slept with his girl servant. Who gave birth to who? Ishmael. Ishmael. But you know what? Ishmael was not the descendant God promised to Abraham. Rather, actually, as we know, God gave Abraham Isaac 15 years later. There's God's plan and God's timing, but he couldn't wait. Because he just thought, child, children, son, is my power, like the culture around him. But you know what? Ishmael's birth became a seed of dispute in Abraham's household. And this dispute and conflict still continues to this day, producing tension and bloodshed around Israel. Right? Look at that. Abraham 
absolutely a man of God. Abraham was a person who received God's grace and his promised word and word of vision. He was so blessed by God. But he faced shame, conflict, and miscarriage whenever he directed himself by his thirst of his own agenda. But through his journey, Abraham was turned to what he ought to thirst for. That is God. God. As he learned to thirst for the Lord eternal, he became Abraham who we know. The father of the faith. Later, if you read the Bible, you understand, we witness Abraham placing his thirst and obedience for God as the highest priority, even higher than his precious promised only one son, Isaac. That is Abraham. Therefore, his descendant David confessed before God like this. Look at uh, uh, Psalm 63, verse 1. Oh God, you are my God. I honestly search for you. My soul thirsts for who? God, you, God. My whole body longs for who? God, you, God. In this parched and weary land where there is no water. David confessed before God like that. This is what Abraham's thirst for. Thirsting and seeking for God is what guides our life toward glory and peace. Amen? So what is thirsting God? What is seeking for God, thirsting for God? This scripture tells us about that. Jesus, as he drew his last bread on the cross, finally he announced that, I thirst, I thirst, and then declared, it is finished. In other words, it is completed. He completed his ministry in his flesh. And as followers of Jesus who gather around his cross like you and me, we must also learn what we must thirst for. What goal guides us toward the eternal purpose in our lives. As the people who gather under the grace of the cross of Jesus, what must you and I Strive to accomplish with such an eager thirst. What do you thirst for? The answer should be the message we have to listen to today. Number one, what you must thirst for is building and raising the church. Church. Don't be confused. It's not about going to church. It's not about attending the church. It is about becoming the church. Say again. It's not about going to church. It's not about attending church. It is about what? Becoming the church. Church is not building or system organization. Yes, yes, we need a building, we need a system, but they are not church. Church is you and I who have become God's household, the family, by the grace of Jesus' cross. That is church. That is church. Being church and building, raising the church like that is what we must thirst for 
like Jesus. Let's see again to the scripture, verse 28. Here's what it said. After this, what does it mean? After this, this phrase points toward the things that happened just before that specific moment. What happened at the time? That is actually, you know, Jesus said to his disciple, beloved disciple, hey, look, your mother. And he told his mother, women, behold, the son, your son, right? That is actually Jesus established his church. In other words, the spiritual family, new spiritual family by the cross of Jesus. So Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, finished. The finished, that word is a very important word in the scripture. The, you know, the finished and uh, um, uh, fulfill, and what Jesus said, it is finished, it is completed. It is actually the same word in Greek Bible. That word, that word, uh, that, there is meaning of Purpose, purpose. It's not just to finish. It's not just complete. The purpose is completed. The purpose is finished. Are you make sense? Does it make sense? So the word finished, completed, and word fulfilled all share the same words like that. That is actually concept of purpose. So what you're reading is on. Uh, uh, an emphasized display of a fulfilled purpose in the cross of Jesus. So this time, what did Jesus do? Yes, make new family. After this, Jesus knew all things is finished. All things are finished, completed. The purpose is fulfilled. So it's make it easy, it's like that. Through his cross, our triumph God has a purpose making Jesus' church, you and I. The Gospel of John reveals to us that the crucifixion is the deed which establishes salvation, redemption from sin, and, and, forming of the church as the body of Christ. So as those who receive the grace from the cross, we must answer this grace with thirst, thirst that longs to become the church, building the church. Because becoming the church is far beyond simply attending a weekly meeting with membership in this particular building. Becoming a church is about being forgiven from your sins, your rebellion against God. Becoming the church means being justified in Jesus and sanctified by God's will. So make sure being church means that we have received forgiveness, another word, redemption, and justification and sanctification. That means being church. And every single step, you know, redemption, justification, and sanctification is possible by the cross of Jesus Christ. Let's see the Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. In him, Jesus, we have what? Redemption. Through his blood, redemption means the forgiveness of our wrongdoing. According to what? The riches of his grace. The reason we can be forgiven is not about my goodness, your goodness, your effort. Only according to the riches of his grace. Amen. Absolutely amen. And then, receiving after receiving the redemption, forgiveness of our wrongdoing, what happened? Let's see again the Romans chapter 3, verse 24. By his grace, they are justified freely through the redemption that is in the Messiah, Jesus. 
Amen. After forgiveness, you know what? We are not sinner. We are not sinner anymore. We are justified, justified through the redemption by His grace again. We are justified. We are justified through what? Through His redemption. But how could how could have that redemption through His blood, through His cross, cross of Jesus? That's not all. Look at again Hebrews, Hebrews chapter ten, verse ten. Hebrews ten ten. By His will, yes, that's His will. That's God's will. We are redeemed. We are uh, uh, forgiven, and we are justified by grace. That is God's will. By His will. We have been made, what? Holy, sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. In other words, through his cross. This is being the church. Being the church. But I don't want you just to pass by uh, important words in this, in this verse. Sometimes we just read without no knowledge. There is we. There are word we. They and we. You know what it means? Yes. I am forgiven. But that's not all. We are forgiven. I am justified. Absolutely. Amen. But that's not all. We are justified. Yes. I am sanctified by his grace. Absolutely. Amen. But that's not all. We are sanctified by his will, by his growth, grace. We, 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 they. That means actually church, his church, Jesus' church. You and I, you and I are so different, so different. There is no same person at all. They, you and I so different that we believe you are wrong with each other. We are so different that we believe you are wrong. You are wrong. Okay. He or she thinks like the same. But you know what? Standing by the cross of Jesus, you and I both became forgiven, justified, and sanctified, and become one family in Jesus Christ. God's household. This is the purpose of Jesus' ministry, and it was completed on his cross. Jesus thirsted for this one. Therefore, you and I, as his people, his disciples, who Follow Jesus with carrying on our own cross? Yes, that is what we must thirst for. Church is something Jesus paid for his life. Therefore, when, you know, Saul becoming poor later, when, when Saul persecuted church, Jesus didn't say like this, hey, 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 Saul, why do you persecute my church? Just didn't say like that. He said, why do you persecute me? Me. Church is the body of Christ. So when persecute church, when somebody persecutes church, that is to persecute Jesus. So to cause dispute in church, 
disrupting its harmony is to go against Jesus. It is a rejection of Jesus' crucifixion and his words, his ministry. The gospel, you know, the, so, so that being church, building church, raising church is what we must thirst for like Jesus. As you know, the gospel spread is a guide that directs a soul, a person, into being the church. The mission works. You know, mission works in other nations is to build a church among them. It doesn't mean we build a church building or system. It means make them who, uh, make them be Jesus' body, God's household, the spiritual family by the cross of Jesus. That is a mission. That is the gospel we spread. That is important things we must thirst for. What do you thirst for? So that, number two, what you thirst for is life that fulfills the scripture, the word of God. When you understand the, what, what we must thirst for is to building the church, raising church after being a church, you may understand, okay, I can do that when we fulfill the scripture, the written word of God. The ministry of Jesus in his purpose to raise his church was a journey lived to fulfill, accomplish the written word of God, the scripture. When Jesus knew all things were finished, he again spoke to fulfill the purpose of written scripture, written word. Let's see again verse 28 and 29. After this, do you understand? After this? Do you understand what it means? After this? No? You have a preacher again? I hope you understand. After making a new family, spiritual family, the church. After this, Jesus knowing that all was now finished. The purpose is finished. Purpose of Jesus' cross was finished. And said, and said, yeah, show us. And said, they don't need to see my face. They have to see the word of God. To fulfill the scripture, I thirst. He said, I thirst for what? To fulfill the scripture. And verse 29, a jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of sour wine on the hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. Just said, I thirst. When a person is dying on the cross in nature to feel thirst from dehydration and exhaustion. Absolutely. Jesus, as, you know, as we know, because he was fully human, so he also felt the same thirst. Jesus on the cross was at the deepest pain he could feel, both physically and spiritually. Spiritually, you know, he had to carry the sins of the world, you and me, so that he was, he, 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 he was separated from God the Father. That is his most painful thing. Because he never ever separated by God the Father. Father and Son is only always one. But at that moment, at that moment, because of our sin, Jesus experienced the separation from God. That is spiritual pain to Jesus. Physically, Absolutely, he was whipped so that he was nailed cross with his body torn by whip. But even in the midst of such immeasurable pain, we behold our Lord Jesus fulfill the scripture. He spoke the words, I thirst. And this too is something we must honor and meditate as we embrace in it as our prayer. It's like this. When you face pain and thirst in our life, you and I, our first response is actually complain and grumble. But 
we must respond with our eyes focused on God's purpose and fulfillment. And we have to confess and we have to say the fulfillment of God's word. That is a mature faith. So please abandon the faith like child and take the faith of maturity. We can say and we can act and we can witness the completion of God's promise, no matter what kind of pain we go through, like our Lord Jesus. At the time, a soldier gave Jesus some sour wine. Uh, other Gospels provide different details at this part of the story. Jesus was offered a wine with some, uh, some you know, the, the wine with, with, mixed with gall, gall, G-A-L-A, gall. Did you know that? Gold. Uh, it is like a painkiller, actually. But sour wine, on the other hand, is something painful to drink for a person with injuries. You understand that? Sour wine is but like an energy drink the soldiers and laborers drank at the time. is energy drink. So giving, giving sour wine to a person being crucified is basically prolonging pain. So other gospels show how Jesus was willingly embracing the pain of the cross. But John Gospel provides a different detail with uh, uh, he receiving the sour wine. That is the word histobranch, histobranch. That connects this scene with the first Passover, the Exodus. When God was delivering Israelite from Egypt, the final disaster was the death of all firstborns. <clears throat> to avoid all the angel of death, the Israelites were instructed to uh, paint the blood of the lamb on, the, on their door frame. And the brush they used to paint the blood was hyssop branch. So the angel death passed over any house with the blood painted by the hyssop, which began the tradition of Passover. The wording of John's gospel brings us to see the lamb of Passover, lamb of God. As we witness Jesus, the lamb of God who carries the sin of this world. So in every moment of Jesus' life like this, until the end, until the end, even the very last, Jesus poured himself for the sake of fulfilling the word of God. This is the story when Jesus was passing through uh, Sychar of Samaria. He was tired from the long journey, hungry and weary. While the disciples were away looking for food, the women came to get water from the well. Jesus provided to her the word of God and her pitiful life changed the life of faith and life of uh, living life. Actually, her life was very changed upside down. When disciples returned with the food, offering it to Jesus, Jesus, Jesus replied that he has another food that they don't know about. Disciples were confused. They didn't understand. So asking each other if someone had already brought something food. But at the time, Jesus explained like this. Let's see the John chapter 4 verse 34. <clears throat> Just said to them, My food, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. To do God's will. And to accomplish this word is also including the meaning of a purpose. Accomplish his work. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Jesus always thirst, hunger to do God's will. Accomplish his work. Even in the last moment, even though he was in the most 
painful moment, he saw what's going on there. His will is accomplished. Even in the last moment, he thirsts for completing the word of God. That is what we must thirst for in our life journey. At the time, you and I will see this one. Number three, ending with a calling completed. What you must thirst for is the ending with a calling mission completed. The ending we must thirst to reach is the purpose and calling of God fulfilled by becoming the church of God. This ending is what completes the story of actually, you know what, victory. Victory. Let's see the verse, tw uh, verse 30 to the scripture. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. In other words, it is completed. The purpose is completed. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus declared, it is complete. It is completed. Through plain sight, you know, general sight, all we can see is a man dead on the cross. The one true innocent died instead of sinners. So what he expected to see is a poor and powerless victim. But you know what? The words that come, come out from the lips of this innocent victim, our Lord Jesus, is the roar of victory. Victory. It is completed. It is victory of the cross. The purpose of the Heavenly Father is completed. The Son of Man now conquers sin and death. By Jesus Christ, the law of sin and death no longer has power over us, his church. There is no power of the church. Our spiritual death is no more, and we are free, now governed by the law of the spirit of life, rather than the law of sin and death. Thanks to his cross, the cross of victorious, Jesus has completed this mission. That is what we must thirst for in our life journey. We thirst to, we must thirst to fulfill our mission, our calling mission. My brothers and sisters, do you have a mission calling? Do you have a mission calling in your life from God? If you don't have that, it's a miserable thing. Because you believe in Jesus Christ, because you are standing by his cross with faith in Jesus Christ, you have to understand, you already have received the mission calling from God. Being the church, building his church, raising his church, and fulfill the written word of God. But we don't know how we can accomplish that mission calling. Because we already, have, we, we have already experienced a lot, we failed. Even though we understand I have mission, I have the mission calling, because I believe in Jesus Christ, even though you just work small things, that is an important ministry for his church. There's very important things for your mission calling. You know, small things is more important than big things, actually. But we don't know how to do that. But Jesus taught how to do that from his cross. This is the last word. He bowed his, 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 his head and gave up his spirit. 
He bowed his head. It is to say Jesus was crucified and dead with the voluntary act by Jesus, not compelled by people. It is Jesus who chose the way of his calling, his mission from the Father God, and, and gave up his spirit. It means actually, you know what, in the Greek word, he, listen carefully, he gave over his spirit. He handed over his spirit. Jesus' spirit. Another word, Holy Spirit. Through Jesus' cross, yes, Jesus completes that. Jesus completes giving his spirit. Giving his spirit. That's why after resurrection, when Jesus met his disciples, what Jesus did is he breathed and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Because he handed over his spirit on the cross, he could say, receive the spirit, the Holy Spirit. You and I have to receive the Holy Spirit because Jesus handed over his spirit on his cross. That is what Jesus completed on his cross. Through the Spirit, we can be a church. Through the Spirit, we can accomplish His word. Through His Spirit, we can make the ending of our life mission completed. Without Spirit, we can't do, we can do nothing. With the Spirit, we can do everything. Everything. At the time when we accomplish, when we complete our mission calling before God, our Father God receive the glory. And God the Father makes us glorious in Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus prayed. To Father God like that. Look at uh, John chapter 17, 17, verse 4 and 5. Jesus prayed, I glorify you, Father, on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. That is mission calling. That is mission calling. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I have with you before the world existed. This is a prayer we must pray also. We glorify God when we receive and uphold God's calling and we complete our mission calling with His Spirit. What is your calling? What aspect of the church has the Lord entrusted you with? What scripture, what promise have you received to fulfill? No matter how small or important it may seem, you must strive and thirst for that. But are you busy for your survival? Take care of your family and business? If you have found God's calling where you are, you have your mission of ministry where you are, sh where you are at. But, but, if you are thirst for your just business, your success, or your power, the grace you have received will result with shame, conflict, and miscarriage. Don't repeat Abraham's mistake. Jesus has finished the mission on his cross. His spirit is given to you and me, and we are called to receive it. Thirst! Thirst for the fulfillment of your own calling mission. Become his church. Build, raise his church. Long for the scripture fulfillment. You know what? At the time, the ending result of our life 
is the mission completed. And then, our Father God will glorify you and me in our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray.